Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Today's show is listener controlled. We had four calls on the hotline this week, starting with Pat from Philly. She has fungus gnats in her spider plant and wants to know how to best repot a large wandering Jew. Next up is Harold from Staten Island. He is having an issue with plum tomatoes. It looks like disease or insect, but it isn't. We have the solution in our second segment. Our friend Pearl, P-E-A-R-L, like the necklace, <laughs> love that. She called the hotline and asked us when to plant her cow lilies. You'll hear our answer in our third segment. Vincent from Paramus, New Jersey called, brought up a great point. Get out some paper and a pen to make notes during the show. He also asked about banding to stop the spotted lanternfly. We'll explain in our fourth segment. Finally, in this week's What's Bugging You? It's slugs. Yeah. Slugs are rarely seen feeding, but they can do some real damage. We'll tell you how to spot them and control these destructive critters. So get out your pens and paper and stay tuned because we'll be back in the garden right after, right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Natural Guard by Fertilome Grass and Weed Killer is a fast-acting herbicidal soap that is OMRI listed for organic use. This ready-to-use and concentrate product kills nearly all unwanted grasses and weeds. Use on mulch areas, around planters and raised beds, driveways, patios, foundations, and fences. Natural Guard Grass and Weed Killer can also be used to prepare an area to plant vegetables or other plants in as little as five days. This organic and OMRI product works best when weeds are young and temperatures are warm. Natural Guard Grass and Weed Killer not only kills weeds organically, but also works great on algae and moss, too. So the next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's Grass and Weed Killer in either a concentrate or ready-to-use and expect to have the best-looking garden and landscape in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Delcab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Pat is one of our favorite listeners oh, from yeah. Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and she called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked about fungus gnats, and then also asked about repotting a houseplant. Listen to what she had to say. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Julio. This is Pat from Philly, um, one of your favorite number one fans. Hey, listen, Lynn. Thanks for uh, touching on my um, information. I wanted to know about my elephant ears. Um, I wasn't able to enjoy my garden this summer because they're so huge. And come to find out that they're not mammoths. They were colossal, (laughs) colossal ears. So what a difference. 
And thanks for letting me know that they are plants, not puppies. <laughs> I, I get it now. But um, listen, last last week you touched on the, um, I think it was the fungus flies, or the fruit flies and fungus flies. Well, they're in my spider plant. So I set my spider plant out on my patio for a few days. And so when I brought them back, they were gone. I guess I kind of like zapped them. And um, I guess that, that comes from, what, uh, too much water or too much watery, waterly love. And also, I, I, I found a few mushrooms growing wild. I guess that's from too much watery love. Okay. Well, anyway, I have a question about the wandering Jews, the wandering Jew plants. I like them because they're such an old-fashioned vintage plant, but they just hard as heck to repot. And, and now they're becoming so leggy, so, you know, I'm, I'm handling them with, with kit gloves, but they're, they're just so fragile and just going crazy. And um, it's, it's, it's like trying to get gum out of my cat's fur, you know, trying to handle them. And um, how, what's the best way to repot a wandering Jew? Okie dokie. All right, then. Well, I enjoy you guys' show, and... Have a good rest of the summer. What's left? Bye. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Wow. Well, speaking of wandering Jews, yep. uh, on WWDB every Wednesday at 7 p.m., Jewish Singles is oh, on. Oh, there you go. There, Julio, there's hope for you yet. <laughs> there is. <laughs> hey, her elephant ear issue, oh, yeah. where it is, it, it happens all the time, where people just <laughs> don't read the tags. And, and, Pat, we don't know. You probably read the tag because we know you're diligent at yeah. what you do. Mm-hmm. But we, how often, like, it's like oh. this plant, it, you know, it's supposed to be five feet tall right. and it's only 18 inches and it's, right. it goes, oh, I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> or even worse, sometimes somebody right. takes the tag out. out. And, yeah, yeah, that happens. So make sure that everybody, you're looking at the tags or reading the backs of packages. Just don't assume because elephant ears could be 18 inches to five feet. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, you know, boy. and how about fungus gnats? Oh, so Julia boy. thinks she put them outside, oh, yeah. and she thinks they're gone. Yeah, no, nah, not necessarily. Yeah, Pat, you need to make sure that you're using a systemic that is using imidacloprid, a systemic granule, because what's going to happen is that there are so many generations quickly that the adults may be gone, but the eggs are still in the soil. So it's not necessarily water, but they're eating the organic matter that's there, and there's enough moisture in that soil that they're going to be around. So again, again, it's, it's a systemic that you want to use because it will make in the systemic granules specifically, because it will control those fungus nets better. Um, we'll just leave that. They're nematodes, but we're not going to go there. Systemic granules do the best job and it controls other insects, almost all other insects. So do that. Right. Right. How about repotting, Julio? She's got so she has yeah. wandering Jew can get to be big, massive, yeah, big, and I Ooh. mean hardy, easy to take care of. Oh, yeah, there's different varieties where there's solid green. There's the most popular is that purpley Ooh, green. Yeah, I like that one, mm-hmm. beautiful. There's a white. There's like a tricolor where it's oh, yeah. a green, uh, a white, and a purple. purple. Ooh, pretty sharp, beautiful. pretty yeah, sharp. Beautiful. But what happens is they just get. Big, Big. <laughs> and, right. and and that you're and what you're afraid of is that it's going to just fall apart when you take it out That's of the right. pot. Yeah. So, well, one thing I'd suggest: consider cutting it back. Yeah. What do you think? I yeah, mean, cut easy. it back yep. to where it's a manageable mm-hmm. size. That's right. Take those cuttings, mm-hmm. make new plants make new if you plants. want. Yeah. You know, you can. They're yeah. easy. They root easily. Oh yeah, they do. You know, either yeah. the same potting that you're mix that you're using, you'll probably be able to get them to root in there. Yeah. Or most people just root them in water. Water, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, or you can sell them yeah. on the uh, Facebook marketplace <laughs> for like a go. gazillion dollars. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, you're yeah. getting ripped off. Uh-huh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. so cut it back, but mm-hmm. you also want to make sure that you're using a good quality potting soil. Any of the soils from coast to Maine, you can't go wrong. The Bar Harbor blend, the Gardener's Great. Gold. Any of those, you're getting nutrient value in the soil so that it will say it's not like it's a charge of fertilizer like some other green and yellow bags that are out there. <laughs> but we're not going to say Scott's. No, we're not. <laughs> or Miracle Grow. No. 
Anyway, <laughs> so That's if right. you use a good quality soil from, yeah. again, just go with Costa Maine. It's a great, great soil company from New England yeah. through all the way down south and, and almost, like, gosh, they got to be almost across the country by now. No problem. You need a big pot. How would you, what size pot would you put it in? Well, if she has, a, let's say, for instance, a eight inch pot, you go to a 10 inch pot. Okay. So just two inches yep, on each side? Yep. And I think you're right. One or two inches like on each side of, of the root mass is what you're looking for. You don't want to go too much bigger. Make sure the soil level when you're done is at the same level mm-hmm. as it originally was because you don't want to put soil in the top and rot the plant because oh, that's yeah. what will happen. You'll end up with a, with a dead plant. So you just want to raise it up so you might not need to put some soil in the bottom. Mm-hmm. And again, leaving about an inch to the lip, and again, that's gonna be an inch, most of all pots, like if you have a four inch pot, it's not gonna be that, but anything like yeah. a six pot, okay. inch pot or, or larger. Gonna put the soil back in, pack it all around, and then the key is, is add a slow release polymer fertilizer, like yeah. Jack's classic, classic coat. Mm-hmm. Now that's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> polymer coated yeah. fertilizers are not organic, just letting you know now, but they are a slow release, mm-hmm that it's through heat, not water, that they break down. Now, the organics are getting better, but I still like the polymer-coated fertilizer. Classic Coat is the one that we use that some of you may know, Osmocote, Mm -hmm. same type of thing. You're going to want just like an all-purpose for a wandering Jew is good enough. Mm -hmm. And then when you water it, just water it in. You're going to eliminate those air pockets that may be left. But you don't want to overwater it because now it's going to retain more water and that you won't have to necessarily water it as much. Agreed? Agreed. Missing anything? No, I think we uh, hit it on that one too. Uh, all right. <laughs> Pat, good luck. Oh, Love right, hearing Pat. from you. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. 
Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Len, our friend Harold from Staten Island called the hotline and grew and is growing probably plum tomatoes in containers this year. One is fine, but the other is not, even though they are treated exactly the same way. Listen to what Harold had to say. Hi, Len and Julio. It's Harold Kozak from Staten Island. Uh, first of all, problem, uh, which is weird. I have uh, two pots of plum tomato plants. And they're growing really tall. I mean, they're like over five feet tall, which is amazing. But they're both identical plants, uh, identical soil, identical amount of water and sunlight. One pot, the plants are growing really great. I'm getting a lot of yield. And the second pot, I'm getting a lot of yield. But I noticed that several of the tomatoes have black rotted bottom parts. And I don't understand why I'm getting the black rotten bottom parts on on those tomatoes when when the other pot which has the identical conditions is not giving me any uh could be maybe i don't it's not even the amount of over, over watering they're getting the same amount of water so if you have an, a solution to that i'd like to know also on a quick note um <clears throat> my wife for the first time has this above ground planter and she planted an eggplant with uh peppers and the eggplant just grew to be enormous and it outcrowded the the uh the pepper plant and I thought the pepper plant was doomed, but now this pepper plant has just grown like, my God, it looks like it's over four feet tall, and it's producing great peppers, and it's above the egg plant. So I guess Darwin was right about survival of the fittest. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, you guys are doing a great job, and as you guys say, and I'll steal your line, see you in the garden. <laughs> there you go. We love our fans. Yes, we do. Harold. Harold's got a great voice. He does. He we does. have a lot of great voices today. Oh, yeah, we do. One coming up, our favorite. Mm-hmm. So what is that, Julio? What's Harold's problem with his uh, plum tomato? He's got uh, tomato rot. <clears throat> he's got end rot. Blossom, Blossom end, end rot. rot. Yeah. Blossom end rot. And that, you know, it sounds, and this is where, like, again, we get to sound really smart. Oh, yeah. It's not an insect. It's not a disease. Yeah. What you have is a calcium deficiency. And why it's in one and not the other, sometimes when soils are mixed that, let's just say they may not be mixed as well. Also, I'm curious of what type of soil he's using. Mm -hmm. Is he using the yellow and green bag? Or is he using, you know, an an organic, um, like a Costa Maine product? Because when the... There's giant vats of the soil and and construction equipment, stir it up, turn it around, then it goes through a bagger and it goes through all this thing. And that most of the time, they're completely, I guess, mixed through. Mm -hmm. For it to be a calcium deficiency in one and not the other is kind of strange, but Mm -hmm. not unheard of. Not unheard of. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to get calcium in there. And I... And that it will, it will help. There, and and this is where I wish somebody named it. Just you know, blossom end rot, uh-huh. calcium deficiency, rather than just blossom end rot. Uh-huh. That where, um, you know, it's also brought in by like going through periods of real wet, real dry, right. real wet, yeah. real dry. But it's uh-huh. still calcium is what you need. Right. Next year, if you're doing the same thing, you're going to want to add calcium through using either like a bone meal. Uh, you're going to use MagiCal, right? MagiCal Cal, is a Jonathan yeah. Green product, yeah. mm-hmm. which it's magnesium and calcium. Magnesium, calcium right. And and it's they actually it's most of the time it's sold for the lawn, but we have little bags that are made specifically sure. for tomatoes and blossom right. end rot. Mm-hmm. And that there is a blossom end rot spray, which is basically calcium, which mm-hmm. to me 
Right. You're getting ripped off. Right. The expense of the product is not worthy. Right. It it plays on people's fear. Mm-hmm. And sure. whereas like, oh, it's got to be a spray, and it's right. and it it's not. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. So you know and. You can solve this all by like using Costa Maine's tomato vegetable blend because mm-hmm. that will have the higher calcium because they're right. again using that composted lobster shell and that that's going right. to be higher in calcium, just what you need. So mm-hmm. again, that's that's what it is. So mm-hmm. so no nothing to fear. And honestly, the the fruit is fine. Oh yeah, the fruit's fine. fine you just yeah. need to cut that out. Cut I mean, out, like yeah. that out on the farm. That's what we ate. We didn't eat the good stuff. We sold the good stuff. We ate the stuff that had spots on it. Oh gosh, <laughs> maybe that's why I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. <it's>, anyway, <laughs> but uh, in any case, calcium deficiency easily solved. Um, you're gonna have to have it get through the plant. It's getting late in the season to to see a major result from it, but just be prepared next year. That's all. Yeah. How about those peppers? Oh, wow. How about his peppers? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Going, you know, going to the second story. It's, yeah, yeah. you know, they're getting big. <laughs> getting big. Peppers like it hot. Yeah. You know, they're going to take off a little bit later in the season. Mm-hmm. You know, that and that I'm, he, he said it was an above ground, so I'm assuming that he has, maybe he has a veggie pot or pot has or something. something that's uh, yeah. a raised bed. Raised bed, yeah. So, which is nice, and that mm-hmm. she's she's doing great. She yeah. got yield from both. It's like under planting, and doing like you have a raised bed, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and it's it's different than planting right in the soil, like yeah. a regular garden. You can get things a little bit closer because you're right up there, and you're working with it all the time. So, good job, awesome. good job, and keep an eye out. Like when we were in Ohio, we saw uh-huh. dwarf varieties of we did. of vegetables, That's like true. eggplant. There's a, there's some new dwarf varieties coming out. Right. So they're not as big, and yeah. I, I would like equate them to like a determinant variety of tomato, like right. a bush type. Yeah. So that, that's something that'll be smaller, yeah. but it's all about the heat. Peppers like it hot, yeah. hot and dry. Hot and dry, yep. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, all right, yeah. we'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Natural Guard by Fertilome Grass and Weed Killer is a fast-acting herbicidal soap that is OMRI listed for organic use. This ready-to-use and concentrate product kills nearly all unwanted grasses and weeds. Use on mulch areas, around planters and raised beds, driveways, patios, foundations, and fences. Natural Guard Grass and Weed Killer can also be used to prepare an area to plant vegetables or other plants in as little as five days. This organic and OMRI product works best when weeds are young and temperatures are warm. Natural Guard Grass and Weed Killer not only kills weeds organically, but also works great on algae and moss, too. So the next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilome's Grass and Weed Killer in either a concentrate or ready-to-use, and expect to have the best-looking garden and landscape in the neighborhood. Smeltzer & Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mastardi Nursery. Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. 
When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, Pearl called us. Oh, yeah. Pearl from Philadelphia. Yeah. She's a listener, and just such a gracious lady. She is. I mean, doesn't she have a great voice? Oh, she's got a great I, voice. I could listen to her voice all day. Her yeah. and Harold, they both have great voices. They do. Mellow, relaxing. Yeah. Anyway, she called the hotline <laughs> and she asked when to plant a calla lily bulb. Listen to what she had to say. This is Pearl, P E A R L, like the necklace. I'm calling to you, first of all, thank you so much for the t shirt that you sent me. That was a very nice surprise. I didn't know I was going to get a free t shirt. Thank you. Now, I have a plant question. Um, my nephew gave me a calla lily, C-A-L-L-A, calla, calla, lily. And I want to know if I should plant it in the fall or should I wait until spring because I know some lily bulbs can't uh, take the snow and ice and they'll rot if you leave them in the ground. So could you please let me know? Um, when I should plant it, I want to put it in the ground. Uh, should I wait until spring to put it in, or would it survive the winter snow and ice and rain? And thank you again so much for the T-shirt. Bye now. Well, Pearl, you're smart not to put it right in because most cow lilies are not hardy. Their natural hardiness zone is tropical, which is zone eight, really eight to ten. If you mulch them real heavy, you could maybe get away to seven, but I wouldn't risk it. I would wait. I would wait, but you've got to keep it cool. You can't let it rot. That's the the worst thing is that if they get a little rot in it, you end up with a mushy bulb come spring. So springtime would be the right time. I would consider planting it and just keeping it inside as a house plant. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, Beautiful. same thing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, and it all depends. I mean, there's whites and there's yellows and there's pinks. Mm-hmm. Um, Beautiful. I'm um, partial to the yellows mm-hmm. because they have that spotted leaf on them, so they're pretty even when they're not in flower. But, uh, again, just hang on to it or plant it now mm-hmm. and just use it as a house plant. See if you can get it to stretch into the spring to where you just plant it outdoors. Then maybe you'll get a rebloom on it because um, the bulb will, at that point, split. Mm-hmm. But, uh, again, that's the answer. Um Anything to add, Julio? I, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I, I would keep it as a house plant. I mean, enjoy it while you have it, you know, in that pot. Yeah, and you then know? you don't risk it rotting right. or dry, even right. even dry rotting. It can right. it can just just completely mm-hmm. turn to like nothing. Oh yeah, you and know we, where we, it ends yeah. up being this hard, you know, thing rather yeah. than even going rot. Yeah. Like we're used to soft, but it can dry rot dry as rot. well. Yeah. So right. yeah, if possible, keep it in, in a dark, cool, cool place. place. Yeah. Throw in some peat moss mm-hmm. so that it will uh, act as, like, it'll absorb some of that moisture around it. And then see if you can save it. Save but it. Yeah. like Julio, I think you should plant it in the house and just enjoy it there. Yeah. And You'll see it every day and, you know, yeah. enjoy it that way. Yeah, and if and if it's done flowering and it doesn't look so great in the spring. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Their plant's not. Puppies. Right, so right. enjoy it. Enjoy it while you have it. Yeah. And it's nice for your nephew. And listen, you know, Uh everybody out there listening, you can get a T-shirt, too. Mm -hmm. If you call the hotline Mm -hmm. and you use your question on the air, you'll get a T-shirt just like Pearl. That's right. What's the phone number, Len? Uh, The telephone number is 609-685-1880. There you go. Make that call. That's right. All right, Pearl, thanks for calling. We hope you're doing well. Take care. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. 
That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, Lanny, you know, Vincent from Paramus, New Jersey, called with advice and a question about that spotted lantern fly. He also mentioned this is something we've had to do before. Get your pencil and paper ready. Here's <laughs> what he had to say. Hi, Lanny. This is Vincent in Paramus, New Jersey. Uh, on your Sunday program, you mentioned about the spotted lantern fly. It was interesting, but you gave the phone number so fast where to get the fly paper for the spotted lantern fly that... Uh, at the time I got a pen, from pencil, <laughs> couldn't get the phone number. Would you be able to repeat it on this Sunday's show, possibly uh, in the beginning and and in the end again, and repeat it, and give us, uh, when you mention, start giving out the phone number, give us a little time to get a pencil and paper. That would help in the future for other information, but uh, and possibly any other ways to get rid of it. I know you mentioned the credit card uh, uh, method, but uh, that would uh, that seem too effective <laughs> if they're up on the top of the tree. But uh, all right, so uh, all right. I was uh, thinking along the line if there's anything like they had years ago to deal with the gypsy moth. It was called paper mache uh, crepe type paper that you uh, wrapped around the tree, tied it, and you applied the stick them to it, and it worked very very well. Talk to you later. Uh, thanks for the information. Bye bye. All right, all right. Vincent wow. from Paramus. Yes, all the way up north. That's Jersey, right. right. You know my alma mater is there. Oh yeah, Bergen Community College wow. horticulture. Look at that. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I'm a North Jersey boy. Oh, you know you? that. That's right. Yeah, you know you've that. been there all your. Well, no, actually, no, I haven't. I've been in South Jersey longer, More longer, yeah. <laughs> but born and raised. Born let's and put raised, it that way. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Took uh, off er- you took off early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, Vincent. Great advice mm-hmm. about 
just when the show starts, make sure you've got a pencil and some paper in your hand yeah. so you can write these things down. Um, I can't remember. We didn't give a telephone number, I don't think. But we did say uh-huh. that Bonide has this jumbo fly paper. Mm-hmm. That's like six inches wide. Yeah. And the brand is from Bonide. And that they have it, and that most of your, you know, go to your local garden center. But I'm going to send you anybody who is up in North Jersey, Bergen, Passaic, uh, Essex, any of that surrounding that surrounding area up in North Jersey. I want you to go to Richfield Farms in Clifton, New Jersey, and I want you to ask for William Morton. Okay, their telephone number is nine seven three. 777-7535. Let me repeat that again. 973-777-7535. And this is for everybody who listens up in North Jersey on 1250 on Sundays, that they'll help you and they'll tell you what you need to do. Okay. Will is actually my nephew and that that was where I was, uh, we were talking about being you know, <laughs> raised it. <laughs> that was yeah. where, uh, you know, I got uh, my uh, gardening and farm chops there for sure. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, it's funny. I can still uh-huh. remember that it used to be Prescott 7. Oh, yeah. Do you remember they used to put the digits? Uh huh. Brett yeah. has no idea what we're oh, talking no. about. He's uh-huh. looking at what the heck are you guys talking about? <laughs> Come on, move on, move, move on. on. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone out there, most uh-huh. of our listeners, they remember when it used to be Prescott or they used right. to do. Anyway. Go watch an old movie. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, and he, he absolutely is right mm-hmm. with the whole concept of gypsy moth. But f- let me say, mm-hmm. you are wrong about the egg masses. Egg masses are not high up in the tree. They're only about at like a six-foot height because when they hatch, they go down the tree and then they go more on the ground. Mm-hmm. They don't go into the tops of the trees. So again, you're going to see it anywhere from ground height to about six feet or so. And then granted, like everything, there's always exceptions to the rule, but the majority of them are going to be within reach of that credit card. So Vincent, now come on, they're not in the top of the tree, (laughs) so you can do a little bit. Maybe he doesn't want to use a credit card. (laughs) Well, you know, I thought about it too. That that the New Jersey Nurseman's Uh Association has credit cards specifically for spotted lantern flies. No kidding. They do. (laughs) They they have. They have one. There you go, Vince. You you call the hotline, Vince, and I'll get you one of those cards, okay? He doesn't want to use If you want it, you know, you want a special card that will be used for spotted lantern fly, we got it. (laughs) That's right. We've got it. (laughs) Because <laughs> I don't want to use my visa. Yeah, you want to use your you visa? Know, I oh. put it back in my wallet. It's all messed up now, so. right? <laughs> messed up. It's gross. Uh, anyway. I can understand Vince you, now, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> use an expired card, baby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or one of those companies you're just mad at. I know. You know? What's in your wallet? In Spotted your wallet? lanternfly. <laughs> <That's right>. Anyway. <laughs> so the egg masses oh, are man. key to get rid of. So. Oh, yeah. That's key right there. You know, if... I t- we talked about it this morning on the way in. Julio and I always talk about it on the way in. Where Pennsylvania, my son-in-law, I can say that now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that uh, where he went and said to me, he said, I don't see as many spotted lantern flies. Now, he's in Philadelphia. And I was like, no, come on. Come on. They're, you just don't see him yet. And then, of course, being the son-in-law now, <laughs> he has everything <laughs> yeah, he wanted. Yeah, right. um, that he said, "Look, here's yeah. an article. Told you. Uh, look at that." And it said that the numbers in Philadelphia are reduced. Mm-hmm. Now, I right. like to think that that's Emily Slackhammer's. That's right. You know her diligence mm-hmm. on the whole point of scraping those egg masses. So Vince, yeah. just don't, Vince, don't think that that doesn't work because it absolutely it does. does. They're having results mm-hmm. in Philly, and this was like ground zero, right? Right. So anyway, make sure you're doing that. And then your point about gypsy moth, you were dead on. Yep. You were dead on. Mm-hmm. Those of us that remember the gypsy moth, I can remember going up into the Poconos or up into Sussex County, New Jersey, and that where half of the trees were dead wow. because of the of the gypsy moth. Wow. And gypsy moth was bad. It was really, really bad. bad huh? And that, that cray paper that he's talking about, it mm-hmm. comes on a roll, right. and you basically take Tanglefoot, mm-hmm. Tanglefoot is this sticky, 
it almost looks like a tub of Vaseline, right. but it's really, really sticky. And you use like a tongue depressor or, or, or a plastic spoon or, or something. A putty knife or something. Yep. And you, and you go and, and you put it on and you band the tree. Mm-hmm. So it's the same exact method same that you used for the gypsy moth that you would use for spotted lanternfly. So those of you familiar with gypsy moth, now granted, you know, we're talking some time, but it's the same method. You're going to capture and collect the insect, the spotted lanternfly, on those things. And, and like I, we jokingly call them, like they're going to be like turtlenecks on your tree, spotted <laughs> the lanternfly. Yeah. And you yeah. have to change it because once those things get full, depending on where your population are, like South Jersey right now has got it pretty significantly got compared it. to North Jersey. Oh, yeah. But it's coming. It's coming, yeah. It's coming. Mm-hmm. So you have to change that. Mm-hmm. And by using that, that cray paper roll that he was talking about it's like you know it's like half the width of a toilet paper roll you know and that and that it's a crinkly paper and and it has some rigidity to it and that's another reason why maybe i'd consider using that bonide's wide fly paper because you can just kind of wrap the tree around it and it's double face so yeah anyway and that you when it gets full you've got to replace it it's not like one and done no you may have a season out of it you may have Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it was last year, you may have, you know, a couple of days. A couple of days, that's right. <laughs> but the idea is you want to uh-huh. capture them before they end up mating and laying eggs. Mm-hmm. Once they lay eggs, then get out the credit card. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because that's your last mm-hmm. shot. That's your last shot. That's right. And now they're at the adult stage right now. Uh, right I there. saw one this morning. Yeah, did you? I saw that one this morning. We have uh, Passion Flower, and I, okay. and I was seeing that it was... It was closed this morning. I came, I went over early uh-huh. to get irrigation set. Right. And it was 6.15 or so. Right. And they were all closed. And I came back, uh-huh. you know, right before we left to go to the studio to record the show. Right. Wide open. And there's Is all of a sudden behind me lands a stupid spotted lantern fly. Oh, boy. Uh. <sighs> It's going to be a mess. It is. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> it's going to be I, a mess. I, th- I think what, mm-hmm. uh, you know, my son-in-law has yeah. chased him all the way over to Jersey. Is that what he <laughs> I think that's what he did. <laughs> I wonder why you're going to stay in Pennsylvania. That's right, Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, yeah. all right. If you've got questions about the spotted lantern fly or anything that we talk about on the mm-hmm. show, please call our hotline, mm-hmm. 609-685-1880. And Vincent, thank you for reminding us about getting pencils and pens and paper yes. and being ready to to write because we do have a quick pace the show's an hour long but uh you know we often say things that you might miss and if you miss yeah. call the hotline yeah call yeah. us back let it let us know what you're looking for we mm-hmm. may not be able to get to you right away but we mm-hmm. certainly will get to you the information oh, eventually yeah, we'll get it. all right we'll be right back right after this Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Staffers of Kissel Hill Home and Garden Store, Roristown, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, 
Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger more bountiful harvest garden tone is simple to use and safe for people pets and the planet no harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added you can find garden tone at fine garden centers visit espoma.com to find a retailer near you garden tone from espoma a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Brett, next week we got to get, like, reverb. Ready? Because when we say this time on What's Bugging You, Echo, (laughs) can we do that, you think? (laughs) That'd be awesome. All right. Yeah, why not? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Next week, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we're going to talk about slugs. <laughs> I have a story, like always. I got a lot of stories. So the other night, it was late, let the dogs out mm-hmm. and walk out on my deck. And there was a railing on my deck. I put the, my hand on the railing. Oh, <laughs> it was like I picked up a slug. That was like disgusting. It stuck to my hand. It was like, you know, I thought it was like recently chewed gum. It was so slimy. And I was like, where the heck did that come from? It's like for a slug, it must have like traveled like six miles to get up my deck railing and where it was. Oh, God. And, you know, we never see slugs unless we're working like, um, like usually leaf debris and things like that, leaf clutter. clutter. That's right. <laughs> but slugs feed at night. Mm-hmm. When we're sleeping, they're yeah. eating. Sure. And then it's uh <laughs> they can do some damage. Yeah, they, can. they can do some damage. And and so you'll see like sections taken out of like hosta. Gosh, hosta. they love hosta. Oh yeah. They love hosta. And so when they feed, they don't make holes in the they don't make holes in the leaves. Yeah. They do what they call rasping, mm-hmm. where it like takes the edges off, off of the edge. and that they can they can do damage because mm-hmm. especially when they're in higher numbers. And this time of the year, we notice them more. A lot we get more rain, more. humid. Yeah, it's perfect conditions for slugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, this is their time. Huh? Well, yeah, this slug was big too. It was. Oh, like, you really got <laughs> hit, huh? <laughs> I mean, but this way, I remembered it, and like yeah, you know, right. normally you know, hey, you know, I'm a oh, garden yeah. guy. I'm that's not right. going to wash my hands. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, I went in and washed my hands. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> you know, you had to snap your fingers oh, to get man. it off. Anybody been there besides yeah. me? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. and the way that you can tell if you've got slugs doing it, you got to look for what they call slime trails. Yeah, little trails. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice. Yeah. Um, so a slime trail. It looks like an oil slick huh. that's, you know, only like a pencil width wide mm-hmm. and that the slug kind of rolls on that and that that's mm-hmm. where that you can tell that you have they slugs. Have mm-hmm. So look for that and that, that'll, that'll tip you off. Um, and again, the hostas always seem to get, the ones. It, and, it, and again, cause again, it's a shady area, right. you know, a lot of times they're in the shady area. They're not going to generally be in like full sun. Right. But right. mostly in the shady areas. Anybody who's got shade gardens, you probably have dealt with. Uh, yeah, that, probably have dealt with it. That, yeah. So now, all right, I have slugs eating my plants. Oh, yeah. What do I do, Julio? You're going to put down diatomaceous earth. Okay. D E D E. Right. Now there's specific ones. There's a horticultural version. And there's the one that you put in your pool filter. Mm. Uh, we do not recommend the one putting in your pool filter. And no. to be honest, we we just know that it's 
our responsibility to tell you you want to use an agricultural grade that is sold in most garden centers. Your local garden center will have it. And that it controls a wide number of pests and it could be used as a granular that you put over the soil. And so when they crawl across it, and we'll talk about the method (laughs) on how it works. It's not very nice, but we'll get into that in a second. But it also can be used as a spray Mm -hmm. and it is organic. So it can be used in vegetable gardens. It can be used in in a lot of different, a lot of different areas. So Julio, let me, I'll test your memory. Do you remember how it works? How DE works? It whips <laughs> the animal, the insect <laughs> apart in every yeah. which way you can think of. Yeah, right. <laughs> Death from a thousand cuts. Yeah, that's right. you know? <laughs> that's how it so if you're yeah. really <laughs> mad at them, <laughs> it's definitely a good choice. It is. <laughs> but, and again, it doesn't poison them. You know, <laughs> this is awful. They oh, bleed to death, I guess. Yeah, I guess they do, huh? But it, uh, they do, and, it, yeah. and sorry, mm-hmm. you know, survival of the fittest. Right. You're a slug. Yeah, you're you know? done. That's why you're a slug is not a compliment. <laughs> <you know? laughs> <That's right. laughs> anyway, uh, so diet space <laughs> thirst, organic, good choice. Beautiful choice. Uh, easy, yeah. cheap. Mm-hmm. The next thing, and this is probably what I would use, again, monide has something called bug and slug. And I like it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it has our, one of our favorite in, organic insecticides in it. And it's Captain Jack's, it's called spinosad, is, is the actual active ingredient. And that's important because it will now, you're controlling more than just slugs. You've, you've got a wider range. But it also has iron phosphate in it. And that's one of the one... That that will control uh, all slugs, snails, and it's in every slug insecticide that you want. So that's probably the one that I would use. Um, again, it it's called Bonide Bug and Slug. There's another one that's called Slug Magic. That's just not plain straight iron sulfate. Just, just or, or I'm sorry, iron phosphate. You're looking for bonite bug and slug, not not slug magic, but bug and slug because it has that spinosad, has that spinosad. You have hosses. Do you ever have an issue? And, and even on your daylilies, do you have any? Do you ever yeah, get any issues? See, yeah. your daylilies are pretty much in sun now. Yeah, they are. yeah, yeah. No problems. My backyard, and I'll tell you what, oh, that like kind of shady there though. It's yeah, it's my backyard, shady, and that yeah. sticky bugger, man. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I'm never gonna forget that. I, I have your wondering. Oh, <laughs> Scarred for life. That's right. Yeah, we'll forget that one. <laughs> no, I won't, I won't. Hey, if I know it's coming, it's one thing, but when it's in the dark and you put your hand in it, all of a sudden you're like, "What the heck?" Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, control your slugs oh, yeah. with bonite bug and slug or diatomaceous earth. It will save your plants and it will save you from having a, a midnight experience. <laughs> the only thing worth would be stepping on one. Could oh, you? Anyway, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomers Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomers Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. 
it's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bloomer's is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomer's has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomer's, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Here we are, Julio. Yes, sir. Back in learning more today. More, more, yeah. Yeah, I learned more about that slug. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) get prepared, North Jersey. That spotted lanternfly has got you in its sights. That's right. It's here. It's here. That's right. That's right. Thank you for all our callers for calling in. We mm-hmm. we really love to talk to our listeners. Yes, we do. Uh, again, that that number is 609-685-1880. We'll be right here in the garden next week at this same time. And we'll talk to you then. The next time you visit your favorite garden center or greenhouse or nursery, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the Garden. That's right. Thank you, Brett. Great job today. Thank we'll you, see you next week right here in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs>